definitely need it. We need, in today's world, we need hope. But we also need humility. We need humility. And Isaiah, in chapter, verse 6 of chapter 2, he says, this is what he says, you have rejected your people. It's talking to God. For you have rejected your people, the house of Jacob. Why? Because they are full of things from the east. And fortune tellers, like the Philistines, they're worldly. They've brought everything in. They brought things in from the outside. The same thing the church is doing today. And they strike hands with the children of foreigners. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. They're prosperous. Their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their own fingers have made. The Israelites are full of pride. Isn't that what we do when, when, we're, when things are prosperous, when, we're, when things are going good? You know, oh, isn't that great? It's great. Ah, oh, yeah. I did all these wonderful things. We get prideful. And then when we, when we stumble, when things happen to us that we don't think we deserve, what do we do? We, God, why are you doing this to me? I don't deserve this. All good things come from God. You're prosperous because he made you, he allowed you to be prosperous. But they were full of pride. They rejected God and they sought after the things of the world. They sought after idols. All these things their hands had made. They had pride in the world and pride in the worship of their idols. Now the key words in these verses, uh, first one is full and filled. Those are two words that are, that are key. See, today in the church, we kind of have that same problem. See, we can be full of worldly wisdom we can be full, filled with money. We can be full to the brim with people. We can be filled with power and even filled with idols. When the reality is we should be filled with the Holy Spirit, walking in the light. Many times we, we fill ourselves with false ideas. As, I'm, as I've been studying and doing a lot of watching of um, what I would call um, mainline, I wouldn't call them progressive because that's a whole other story, but a whole other line of trouble I've been studying. But mainline churches that are, that are seeker sensitive, they're, they're full of human false ideas and ideals and comforts. And the reason why we do this, the reason why I think we, we try to accumulate things and why we, we look for things to, to make us happy is because we're empty inside. We're empty. We've lost our sense of who God is. So what happens? Isaiah's gonna, he's gonna tell the people, and I think we're at that same place where they were, maybe not in the same way. I mean, I don't think we, we don't bow down to idols. Well, we do. <laughs> maybe not physically, but I think emotionally and mentally we do. But he's going to tell them what's going to happen. In verse 9, he says, So man is humbled, and each one is brought low. Do not forgive them. I read that, and I read that a couple times. I'm like, what is he saying? See, when, when, we, when we fill ourselves up with everything but God, we're not truly going to be enriched. We're not, we're not going to be fully full. There's always something more that we need. And ultimately, what God is going to do, he's going to bring us low. Now, what does that mean? It means that he's going to take us, and we're going to be down on our knees, asking him to forgive us. He's going to show us how pitiful we truly are. I am not looking forward to that time. But I am looking forward to that time. Because I need the truth. I need the truth. That's why some <laughs> there are churches today and pastors today who will not preach that we're all sinners. I'm sorry, the truth is you're a sinner. And we sin all the time. And we need forgiveness. And we need to, we need to repent. 
Sometimes daily, most of the time daily. Because we're, we just, we live in this world, we, we struggle with our sin nature. That's why Paul tells us to put it to death. See what Isaiah is saying here when he says, do not forgive them. We run the risk of coming to that point of no return where it'll be too late to ask God to forgive us. We see examples in scripture. I brought this up before. Ananias and Sapphira. They cheated. They lied to the Holy Spirit. They were taken like that. There was no repentance, at least that we can read in scripture. It was too late. God knew they were never going to repent. So he took them. And I don't, we, we, we see different times this happens. But, you know, I don't know what God's going to do. But I don't want to get myself to the point where I'm sinning so much and I think it's okay and I'm living in the world and living with materialism and living it's, it's, and having idols and being filled with the wrong things that I get to the point where I can't see God anymore. And he says, it's too late. See, when we're filled with so many wrong things, so many empty things. Forgiveness becomes unthinkable. That's why he brings us low. He says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you to the lowest spot so you realize how much you need me. That's your last opportunity to see me and come to me. Lay your burdens on me, I'll carry them for you. And I'll lift you up after I bring you low if you turn to me. But see, the, the time comes where it may be too late. And it's not that God doesn't still love. I mean, I'm sure God still loved Ananias and Sapphira. He still loved them. But see, the problem is, is when we're at that point, if, if we turn from God and if he pours out blessings upon us, what are we going to do? We're going to turn that back into self-salvation. Oh, God's blessing me, so I guess I got to go to him. No, we will say, ah, look what I did. See, it's proof. I didn't need God. I did this on my own. So God doesn't pour out his blessings on somebody who is that unrepentant and never going to repent. And you say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. What about these people who are rich? I'm not sure what God's doing. All I know is what the Word says. God does things that I can't understand and I can't fully explain and fathom. What I do know is is that he's going to bring us low, and we must repent. We have to be emptied of the fullness of ourselves. That is so easy to be full of ourselves. I, I, I struggle with that. I struggle with being full of myself. I'm, I'm pretty good with computers. I, let me say it this way. I'm probably better than most people with computers. I can figure stuff out pretty easily. You know what he did to me this week? He made me forget a password. I still can't remember it. For the light, and I've tried every password in my brain, and I can't find it. So, what's he telling me? He's telling me, you're getting a little too full of yourself. I still, I'm still learning that lesson. But we have to empty ourselves of the fullness of ourselves in our lives. And then, then that's the only time we really can witness the greatness of God when we are helpless against his judgment and he is restoring us by grace.